one of the things that I have learned about Jamie this week is that he's a fan of comic books. <laughs> Great mentality, <laughs> right? <laughs> so my next guest is appropriately a man who devotes much of his time to the study of the comic book. Here is Phil Suling. Welcome, him, please. <laughs> a grown man with a hand. <laughs> <laughs> A grown man with a handful of comic books. I didn't know you were my mother. <laughs> <laughs> How did this start with you? Obviously, well, as a kid. Uh, I read thousands of them when I was a kid, and uh, the interest never died. It was, it's a love. It's something that you just can't do unless you really love it, unless you're devoted to it. I like these. I've read uh, Faulkner, Steinbeck, Hemingway, and I love these also. This is not instead of. This is in addition to. Mm -hmm. I think this is part what of America's... It, what did it do for you as a kid? And tell me why they're so popular. What did it do for you as a kid? One thing it did was it ex accelerated my reading speed. I'm right. a super fast reader without Evelyn Woods, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I owe it to Superman. <laughs> <laughs> what is that man doing? He is reading <laughs> an encyclopedia. I had to. On the rainy days, on the porches in my neighborhood, yes. there were so many boxes full of comic yes. books that you had to Number. read fast in order to read all of them. But besides but reading stuff. fast, I mean, it, it, you, you had a great imagination, obviously, and, and it stimulates uh, that. They, they did that, yes. That's, yeah. That lets you take off. Well, the I interesting thing, too, about comic books, Mike, a lot of movie directors studied comic books because that was the original framing. That's true. The, the, that's how they came yeah. around to storyboarding yeah. commercials. I mean, Alfred Hitchcock used the uh, comic books as mm -hmm. a way of framing because they'd have a master shot and a close-up. A lot of directors today use the storyboard. Right. Prince. Sure. Just like that. And Batman was a hit. And how? <laughs> and don't forget Wonder Woman. <laughs> wow. Why are, were they more popular in? <laughs> were they more popular at one particular time in history than? At one time, yes. During the Second World War, we had one enemy out there, and everybody was against <laughs> that <laughs> one enemy, and we were all united against it. And the comic books, of course, in big and in color, they showed us oh. very simplified. They showed us who we were against, and the soldiers who went overseas, young boys taken away from the first time. They read them by the thousands. They were the biggest customers of comic books ever. That cover... May I show this to camera? Because this is probably... I have no idea what this is worth now. Can you give me an idea, Phil, what a copy uh, like that is? That book in itself is worth 15 or $20. It's, it's become an antique. Want to sell? Collector's item. <laughs> <laughs> And it was 10 cents in July yeah. and August. And, the, and it, look at how many pages they had Which in this, year too. Which year was that, Mike? I don't know what year. Six, how many, what year this is about 1942. Yeah. That's the era you're talking about. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here we have more famous. This is famous. Oh, oh yeah. This, next one coming up, Mike, is a classic. This is the one that's made All Marlon Brando $2 died. million dollars for $3 million. Oh, the the three comic million. original yeah. Superman. Look at that. That's the first. Oh, that's yeah, let the let me, first one. This, this, is, this, is a, this, is, this is the McCoy here. Oh, he's slick. Can you tell? Can, I checked his fingers. that were, They were clean and everything. <laughs> <laughs> what is that one worth? The, the original this is one. worth about $1,500 now. Oh. Are you kidding? No. I'll meet you in the alley. Yeah. <laughs> this one, Mike, was the first one. This is the first comic book that ever. was ever produced Mutt and Jeff. in serial yeah. form. Strange enough, this is number one on it. So and there. it was uh, born, this comic book was born in 1934, and that's when I was born. So there's a kinship there. <laughs> <laughs> How many do you have, Phil? How many comic books? Well, I buy them, sell them, and trade them so that it fluctuates. Oh, you're but about 10 or 15,000. It's a veritable fortune, isn't it? <laughs> I'll bet you out, out there, there are, uh, oh, I'd say 500 kids who have more than 25,000. And that's not even, you know, strong collecting. They just accumulate. It seems to me that the superheroes are more important than the other comics. The superheroes caught everybody's fancy. Everybody was interested in science fiction and pulps and uh, 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 juvenile literature. But when you put a costume on this hero, on this oh, Errol yeah. Flynn-type hero, uh, oh, it was a whole new thing. That happened in about 1938, and that was Superman. That was but the first Super hero they introduced? That was the one. Superman. That's the one. And he got gypped out of it. Well, that's, that's another story. They're doing very well. Both Siegel well, and Schuster, Schuster, the yes, two Siegel young fellows, they were 16 when they originated. Yeah. And uh, didn't sell it for another year or two, but then it just took off. It's I been know in movies, Cleveland. films, television. It's been in you know every media, that, every medium that you can uh, name. Are you talking about the fellow who originated? Yeah. The two gentlemen. Yeah. 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 Yeah, At that time, two high school kids. Oh. Now, imagination. Is, is Superman responsible for the other superheroes, would you say? Uh, yeah. R Tell him about Captain Marvel before you show the, the Batman. Captain Marvel, maybe some of you remember him 
And it was because of Superman, Captain Marvel had to disappear, right? That's right. There was uh, the <laughs> idea of a super being with all powerful uh, characteristics. Well, as soon as Superman was a hit, of course, there were thousands of publishers who wanted to publish thousands of heroes. And uh, the biggest selling comic book of all time was Captain Marvel, which, I don't know if you know this, Jamie, was published every two weeks. Oh, yeah, I used to buy it. Not once a month. <laughs> every two weeks. Couldn't and wait at the drugstore when they <laughs> came in. They undid that wire around there and hit my Captain Marvel, Billy Batson and Your Shazam host. and <laughs> Shazam. <laughs> and Captain Marvel was re... Here's the original Captain Marvel. Let me show you. Oh, that. yeah, that's... Oh, yeah, oh, my. I remember Ooh, that. Bullet Man. Right? That's Bullet Man. Knows. Yeah. Really Star Spangled that. Kid. Look at really the Blue Beetle. He's got a head shaped like Don Rickles. <laughs> <laughs> it is Don Rickles. Yeah. Spy Smasher. That was a yeah, Spy Smasher. Spy Smasher. Yeah. <laughs> hey, great names. I love it. What, what happened to Shakespeare? <laughs> He's in Still this writing. Do you know? <laughs> but they had characters like Steel Sterling, right? He fell Steel. into a vat of steel and came out the superhero. And his underwear had rivets in it. <laughs> <laughs> That did it. <laughs> that's a superpower. I'll never understand. I want to tell you, that's some kind of superpower. <laughs> the, uh, the war years, they personified the flag. They made him Captain America. Yeah, Captain and, uh, America. And Bucky, his sidekick. Yeah, Yeah, that was really Look a big one. Look at the swastika down there. That's yeah. a, uh, it's a beautiful cover. It's after the, after the Red cover. Skull. He was always after him. Yeah. Right? And they tried every characteristic that a superhero could have, whether it was strength or speed. And they had one called Plastic oh, Man. Yeah. And Jamie, you like this I one, I like right? Plastic Man. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you laughing at? This guy, Plastic Man, was a criminal. And he got shot, right? right. And it, I and like he... this as police. <laughs> right. Look at the billing, police. How did Plastic Man become Plastic Man? They, something spilled on him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually... It's the other guy who took the rivets off. <laughs> and, he, and the plastic spilled out. Are they still creating comic oh, yeah. book heroes? Absolutely. There's some of the old ones have given way to the new ones. This is Flash. a... Oh, the Flash. The Flash. Great. There's the old Flash yeah. fighting the new Flash. <laughs> <laughs> Today we have the Flashers. <laughs> <laughs> the old Flash fighting the new Flash. <laughs> and boom. <laughs> They've tried a lot of different uh, formats and different uh, characterizations. Wonder Woman, for instance, for a while changed. And she looked like this. Mm -hmm. But she went That's back. That's a little too tailored to look for yeah, Wonder Woman. Sure That's is. right. The, you know, the, it looks like somebody going, listen. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the uh, Captain Marvel coming back, this time with the approval of Superman. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, Shazam's a big nice, nice Shazam, Shazam, Shazam is a gear. There again. The, the, uh, this, oh, look at this. This was Jungle DC Comics. comics yeah. The Jungle Comics, they oh. used to put out Planet Comics as well, right. which I'll bet you where George Lucas got a lot of his ideas for Star Wars yeah, out of great. Planet Comics. No yeah. doubt about it. See, this cover... This is, is before King Kong, too, isn't it? Yeah. This cover... Uh, and Sheena. In the, in the it film. never hurt to sell the book, to have a beautiful girl on the cover. And they're still doing that. Yeah. Well, I read those. Yeah, this is a new one. I don't know that one. Red, Red Sonia. And you can see why the kids are spending money on this. Look Red at Red Sonia. Red Sonia. What is she all about? <laughs> oh, come oh, on, Mike. <laughs> I'll oh, trade you Red Sonia oh, for a Wonder Woman. Wait a minute. I just noticed. <laughs> wait a minute. Red Sonia has rivets in her underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mr. Sonia. <laughs> Solid steel. You Jamie, we have a surprise for you. One of these comic superheroes... Is General Westmoreland's coming no, back. No no. <laughs> no, no. One of the comic superheroes is actually here today, and he's offered to take you to lunch. May we meet our superhero, please? Who's that? 